Hello everybody and welcome back to my run through Game of Thrones every single episode for the very first time before we get to the start of season 8. My name is Sean O'Connell, I'm the managing director here at Cinema Blend and I am a newbie to Game of Thrones. I don't know if you can still call me that after 6 seasons and 6 episodes, but that's basically where I'm at right now. I like to consider this the final stretch. Um, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I'm really hoping to fit all of these in before we get to the beginning of Season 8 because I've heard from so many of you guys that you're using these episode recaps as a way for you to refresh on the important beats and maybe learn a few things that I'm picking up that you guys didn't get on a first time through. So we've made our way to um, Season 6, Episode 7. I'm told it's called The Broken Man and truthfully, that can uh, reference just about anybody. Um... But I'll say right now that it's, um, how about Theon Greyjoy? Let's find out together. I'm going to press play. You're going to go down and press uh, subscribe. And then you're also going to turn on your notifications so that as I post these last few episodes running through uh, the recap of season six and seven, you won't miss any of them as they arrive on Cinema Blend's YouTube page. So without further ado, The Broken Man, which is beginning without a map. So this should be significant. Ian McShane is on the yeah, shelf! Is this a church that they're building? Oh, look at that guy, huh? <sighs> what? What? He lives! Is that good or bad? I don't know. In all my days, I've never seen a man swing an axe like that. How many men did it take to cut you down? <clears throat> Just one. He must have been some kind of monster. <clears throat> he was a woman. When I found you, I thought you'd been dead for days. I was going to give you a proper burial, and then you coughed. <laughs> Nearly shit myself. <laughs> what kept you going? Hate. There's a reason you're still here. Uh, there's a reason I'm a big fucker and I'm tough to kill. For years, I pretended to love the poor, the afflicted. I had pity for them, but they disgusted me. They are hard to love. The poor disgust us because they are us, shorn of our illusions. Can I ask you about a personal matter? Of course. The king mentioned that since your reunion, you haven't joined him in the marriage bed. You have a duty, your grace. The desires that once drove me no longer do. Congress does not require desire on the woman's part, only patience. But you've made great progress. I only pray your grandmother follows your lead. I think she wants to kill you, dude. My grandmother? You must teach her the new way, or I fear for her safety. I think this is a ruse. Does it move or talk? I want to speak with you alone. Septa Unella has been my true friend and counselor. Oh, oh this is madness. You marched against the High Sparrow, against the Faith. We marched for you. The gods could have punished you and father, but they didn't. They showed mercy. What about your brother? What mercy did they show him? Loris's only hope is to confess his crimes and repent. You will leave for Highgarden today. I am the queen. It is my duty to serve my husband, the king. But you should leave, grandmother. Your place is at home. Give an indication. See? I knew Go it. Go home. But no way Marjorie was going to turn. The Boltons, the Karstarks, the Umbers. They know you're here. I need you with me if we're going to beat them. And we need to beat them if you're going to survive. The Crows killed him. He died for us. If we are not willing to do the same for him, we're cowards. And if that's what we are, we deserve to be the last of the free folk. No. <laughs> you vote of confidence? I'm a giant? Be sure they'll come. You're not clever like you, Southerners. We say we'll do something. We do it. Yes. Yes! <laughs> I heard you were leaving King's Landing. Your grandson is still a prisoner. You'll leave him rotting in a cell. Loras rots in a cell because of you. I made a terrible mistake. I carry it with me every single day. Good. <laughs> I delivered an army of fanatics onto our doorstep. And now we must fight them together. You've lost Cersei. It's the only joy I can find in all this misery. <laughs> now that is a sorry attempt at a siege. You promised me a lordship 
and a castle and a high-born beauty for a wife. And you'll get all three. A Lannister always Don't pays... say it. Don't fucking say it. <laughs> Come out and face us, Blackfish! We have Lord Edmure! Yield the castle. Or I cut his throat. Go on, then. Cut his throat. <laughs> I'm here by the king's command to take back this castle. Have him bathed and fed. Get word to the blackfish. I want a parley. A parley or a fight? He's an old man. You've got one hand. My money's on the old boy. Lady Mormont. Welcome to Bear Island. Hmm. Why are you here? Stannis Baratheon. He showed me the letter you wrote to him when he petitioned for men. It said... I remember what it said. Bear Island knows no king but the king of the north, whose name is Stark. Exactly. Rob is gone, but House Stark is not. I've come with my sister to ask for House Mormont's allegiance. As far as I understand, you're a snow, and Lady Sandra is a Bolton. What you have to understand, my lady, is that... I understand that I'm responsible for Bear Island and all who live here. So why should I sacrifice one more Mormont life for someone else's war? <laughs> She's great. How reasonable. She's right. Your uncle, Lord Commander Mormont, Made that man his steward. He chose John to be his successor because he knew he had the courage to do what was right. Because Geo Mormont and Jon Snow both understood that the real war isn't between a few squabbling houses. As long as the Boltons hold Winterfell, the North is divided, and a divided North won't stand a chance against the Night King. Unifying parties has never been a strength on Game of Thrones. House Mormont has kept faith with House Stark for a thousand years. We will not break faith today. Good girl. Good lady. Thank you, my lady. How many fighting men can we expect? 62. <laughs> Every man from Bear Island fights with the strength of ten mainlanders. If they're half as ferocious as their lady, the Boltons are doomed. <laughs> Is it too much to ask for the Blackfish to open the door and say, It's Jamie fucking Lannister. Kinslayer. In the name of King Tommen, I order you to surrender. Or, or you'll kill Edmure. Hundreds will die. Hundreds of mine, thousands of yours. But if you surrender, I'll spare the lives of your men. Bargaining with oathbreakers is like building on quicksand. The war is over, sir. As long as I'm standing, the war is not over. So you can either attack or try to starve us out. We have enough provisions for two years. Do you have two years? Kingslayer. Why did you come treat with me? And I wanted to see you in person, get the measure of you. I'm disappointed. Aw, oh, come on! That's Jamie Lannister. The answer is no. Lord Glover, if you could just hear us I've out. I've heard enough. We've only just taken back this castle from the Ironborn. The Boltons helped us do it. Who is fighting in this army? The bulk of the force is made up of wildlings. <laughs> and the rumors are true. Lord Glover, I've nothing else to say. I would remind you that House Glover is pledged to House Stark, sworn to answer when called upon. And where was King Rob when the Ironborn attacked this castle? Taken up with a foreign whore, getting himself and those who followed him killed. But well, House Stark is dead. You think Uncle Euron's hunting for us? Of course he is. As long as we're alive, we're a threat. Drink. I don't want any. I don't care what you want. Drink. I know you've had some bad years. Some bad years? But I'm tired of watching you cower like a beat dog. If you're so broken that there's no coming back, take a knife and cut your wrists. But if you're staying, Theon, I need you. We're gonna sail to Marine. We're gonna make a pact with this Dragon Queen. And we're gonna take back the Iron Islands. I was right. It's not enough. We need more men. There's no time. If we went down to Castle Kerman, I know that Lord Kerman. We is... fight with the army we have. What the fuck are you? Hold on. Yeah. Who the fuck is this? Ah! Who's she riding to? Never too late to stop robbing people, to stop killing people, and start helping people. Get busy living or get busy dying. Seven save you, friends. How can we help you? Do you have any horses? No horses. Food then. You're welcome to stay for supper, but we have hungry mouths here. If you kill Ian McShane, I will riot. Stay safe. The night is dark and full of terrors. Seven save your friends. 
You don't believe in your seven. They're from the Brotherhood. I follow the Red God. What do you want to do? Fight them? I'm done with fighting. Even if it's to protect yourself. Violence is a disease. You don't cure a disease by spreading it to more people. You don't cure it by dying either. You're Westerosi. What do you care? I want to book passage home. Can't afford it. I leave in two days. You can have a hammock in steerage. I want a cabin. And we'll leave at dawn. Look out. Sweet girl. Look out. <laughs> What? Oh, boy. Who do you turn to for help? You can't trust anyone. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Hound, you didn't hear all this? This is mass slaughter. Brought Ian McShane in for one episode? Let's quickly go through episode 7 of season 6, titled The Broken Man. And theoretically, I guess it refers to two different people. One, I guessed, was um, Theon Greyjoy. And we do catch up with Theon briefly, and um, he's given an opportunity. This is his sister, uh, Yara, who says, Look, I need you to come back. They're going to sail to Meereen and, and try to bond with Danny. Everyone wants to bond with Danny now at this point, especially everyone from the Iron Islands. So she says, look, either snap out of this or kill yourself. You're not you're not any use to me unless you can come back and beat Theon Greyjoy. And she refers to him as the broken man. The other one would be the Hound. Surprise return of the Hound. Um, and I would argue right now that I don't see the point of it. Um, I thought the Hound, he'd served his part. He'd escorted Arya further in the story. Um, he was on her list. She showed him mercy. She wasn't quite ready to execute somebody at that point and uh and we left him for dead now like like a few people on this show if you don't actually see them die uh you can't believe that they are dead so it, it was interesting to see the hound come back ian mcshane i said this during the commentary i can watch ian mcshane do anything for any amount of time i'm sad they only used him for one episode i'm sad we never got never got to really see more with that character that character seemed pretty interesting but for the most part, it's, I guess, set up to put the Hound back on his uh, violent spree, right? Because that's who he is at heart. And then I guess deep down, now that we know the Hound is back, what I'm intrigued about is a potential uh, confrontation between the Hound and uh, the Mountain. We'll see. Another tip-off was Marjorie, who a couple episodes I said, you know, I don't think that she's really brainwashed. I don't think she's buying into the High Sparrow's teachings. And she lets in... Um, uh, Lady Olena that look this is a ruse I, I am playing along with this and I'm working them from the inside so that's been good to be confirmed then we get that tremendous scene with Lady Olena and Circe where they sort of spar back and forth and um, Lena Headey is a great great actress also and is able to play up um, like look yes I, I'm, I'm responsible for all this but I need your help and Olena's like no look look the only the fact that you're losing or you lost is the only thing that brings me happiness Two of the most catty, uh, despicable people on the show. But when they go at each other's throats, it's fantastic. The majority of the show is dedicated to the uh, Lord of the North tour, where John tries to recruit as many people as he can for his army and has very middling success. Um, he recruits 62 soldiers from House Mormont, but when he goes to House Glover, he realizes they don't have the um, support from the north the way that they needed. And they don't only need to take over uh, Ramsey, but they needed to take over uh, when the army of the dead show up, when the Night King shows up. So uh, the last bit we got was Jamie arriving at River Run and confronting the Blackfish. And it's interesting to see also that uh, people don't fear the Starks and the Lannisters the way that they used to. People don't respect the Starks and the Lannisters the way that they used to. Some do. And just because the king commands uh, someone to do something by way of Jamie Falk and Lannister uh, doesn't mean that it's going to necessarily carry out. And just because the Starks ask you to stand up 
And when the leader of uh, House Glover says, like, look, where was Rob Stark when I was getting attacked? He's right. Getting houses to band together and, and work toward a common goal has never ne been a strength of the people on Game of Thrones. And so when uh, the threat comes from north of the wall, I can't see the surviving uh, members truly banding together to fight off the Night King. But... We'll see how the rest of season six and then all of season seven plays out. Uh, Arya books passage out of Bravos, but before she can, she gets stabbed and uh, pulls herself out and is looking for help. But who do you turn to for help when you can't trust anyone uh, who's around? Because they all could potentially be faceless men. Uh, and and we'll see if John is able to sort of march his um, makeshift army into battle against the Boltons. Still a lot of stuff to come as season six plays itself out. So that was episode seven, The Broken Man. And we will be back very soon with an analysis of season six, episode eight. So make sure you go down and hit subscribe, turn on your notifications, and we'll meet you back here as soon as the next episode drops.